Hello everyone, I'm Zephyrin. Welcome back to the Mastering Mind Super Series. This is part 10 and part 3 of the intermediate level. And today we're going to be talking about two-dimensional patterns. So let's get into it. So first of all, what do I mean by two-dimensional? So what I mean by two-dimensional is when there are tiles on both opposite sides of a number. So for example, here it would be above and below instead of just one of them. Or if you're talking about something that's vertical, it would be to the left and the right. So that's what I mean by two-dimensional. The first pattern we're going to look at is the 1-1 one, one in 2D up against an edge here. So this follows similar logic to the basic 1-1 one, one, where it's just in one dimension, so these two tiles would be uncovered or these two tiles would be uncovered in a one-dimensional version, but we're dealing with them on both opposite sides, top and bottom. And more specifically, this pattern is the same as a 1-1 one, one with the perpendicular wall here. So what happens in this pattern is that you can be sure that these three tiles to the side of the 1-1 one, one are all safe. And the logic is similar to the basic 1-1. One, one. So we know looking at this one that there must be a mine somewhere in these four and this one also sees it within these four so then these additional three tiles that it sees can't have it so we can be sure that they're safe and this board conveniently had the next pattern i wanted to show which is the 2-2 up against a flat wall in 2d um, obviously now we can be sure that these are the two mines but if all of these tiles were covered you can use similar logic this two sees two mines within these four so it could be these two, could be those two, could be those two, whatever. This two also sees wherever those two mines are, plus these three additional tiles, so they have to be safe. Now if we increase the number by one, similar logic again. So now we have a 3-3 three, three in 2D up against a wall. And same thing, we can be sure that these three tiles are safe, because this three up against the edge sees three mines within these four. This three has to see those three mines wherever they may be, plus these three additional tiles. So all these three must be safe. Now if we go even one higher, this is very unlikely to happen. I had to go into the editor, but if you were to encounter a 4-4 along a wall, same logic, but now there's only one possibility where all of these four have to be mined, so you can know that these three are safe. So here I have another example of this 2D pattern here, just showing how it doesn't necessarily have to be on the edge of the board, but rather it just has to be on the edge of covered tiles. So here there's a 2-2 two -two in 2D. The pattern still applies even though this isn't the edge of the board. This essentially would act the same as an edge of the board since there are no tiles available here. So the pattern, this, the logic still applies, this two would see two mines somewhere within these four, could be there, there, whatever. And this two sees it, so these three are safe. All right, now let's talk about another 2D pattern that is arguably my personal favorite pattern in all of Minesweeper. So the one, two, one has a two-dimensional extension and it functions similarly to the one, two, one that's just on one dimension where it's against a wall. But now it can be completely surrounded. It does not have to be on an edge. The same thing happens every time you see it. You have the ability to clear eight tiles whenever you see this. So you can clear the three that are on the sides of both ones. So that would be these three. And then on the side of the other one, that would be these three. And you can clear the two that are on both sides of the two. So that would be this one and this one. So you can clear these eight tiles whenever you see this one, two, one. And as for the logic, I think the best way to explain the logic is just to try experimenting by putting a mine in any of the spots that I said must be safe and you can see how it doesn't work out. Like if we put a mine here, which is a spot that should be cleared out, we realize that we can't put a mine anywhere else to satisfy this two without um, overloading one of the, one of these ones. So you can experiment in all those positions to see. But let's go ahead and clear all these out. So the three on the side of the one, um, those on the side of the two, this one on the side of the one. 
So you get this kind of three line shape every time you see a 1-2-1 one, one in 3D. Here's just another example. This one's even more extreme because we have now a few 1-2-1s one, like intersecting each other here. We'll focus on this 1-1 one, one, or 1-2-1 one, one right here. So again, we have the three that are on, on the side of the one. So that would be these three are all cleared out. And then on both sides of the two, so we can do this one. And on the side of the other one, so that would be those. And we have another 1-2-1 one, one right here, so we can see these three on the side of the one already cleared out, these two on the on both sides of the two already cleared out, and we can clear this tile that's on the side of that one. And we have another 1-2-1 one, one that revealed itself, so we can do the same thing. Um, we're looking at these three right here on the side of the one, these three are cleared out, go on both sides of the two, we have that, and look at that, we have another one. Um, and then on the side of this one, these three. And you can see another one, two, one. You can see um, all the tiles already cleared out for that one. These three on the side of the one, both sides of the two, and on the side of the three. So you can, this pattern, this is why this pattern's my favorite. You can clear so many tiles out at a time. This pattern likes to intersect itself um, like this sometimes, which makes things really satisfying. Now this is kind of just a review, but the 4, 1, 5, 2, 6, 3 patterns are technically 2D, so might as well include them in here. Alright, one final example. So right here, I wanted to show a hidden version of one of the patterns that we discussed today. It's somewhere in here. Um, so you can pause the video if you want to look for it. But this is why it's important to remember reduction. But anyways, the pattern is right here. So this is actually a 1-2-1, one, one, but reduced. If we just mark some lines that we know, we'll see that this 2 is reduced by this. So it's a 1, effectively. Pretend that this isn't here. This 3 is reduced by this. So it acts as a 2, if we pretend that this isn't here. And this 2 also is reduced by this. Pretend that this isn't here, this acts as a 1. So all of a sudden, using reduction, this is a 1-2-1. One, one, if we just pretend that these two aren't there. So now we can follow our uh, rules for a 1-2-1 one, two, one in two dimensions. So on the side of the effective 1 here, we would have these three clear, which they effectively are, because we pretend that this isn't here. Um, on both sides of the effective 2, we can clear those. And then on the side of the effective 1, just like that. So again, very important to remember reduction. It will show up everywhere. You never know where it'll be. Um, but yeah, that'll be it for this video. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments. And yeah, until next time, thanks for watching.